Up until now, most electric fat bikes on the market using hub motors have fallen into one of two camps. The large majority of them are using a geared hub motor in the rear, typically a Bafang G60, G62, or any of the many identical clones that are produced from China. Now these motors aren't bad, they weigh about 4 to 5 kilograms, and they have a decent power output, but they suffer all the conventional drawbacks of a geared motor drive. Namely, there's acoustic noise you can hear while it's running, and you have reliability concerns with the gears and the clutch inside the motor. At the other end, and more on the DIY side, you get a lot of people doing fat bike conversions with really heavy, fat, direct drive hub motors. Now, there's a lot of generic companies making these motors with 50 millimeter wide stators, and they provide the option for regenerative braking and a robust motor drive, but they weigh a ton. Typically, we're looking at 20 to 25 pounds just for the motor alone, and a resulting fat bike is not so much a bicycle as a moped. What Grin's introducing is a third option to the mix here. It's a direct drive hub motor that's only a little bit heavier than the geared motors currently used on fat bikes, but that brings with it all the benefits that direct drives has to offer. That means totally silent control, super powerful regenerative braking, and robustness and reliability because there's no moving parts inside the motor. So we've been making and selling the rear fat motor since late spring and the front motor since late summer of this year to select pilot customers and early adopters while we iron out the manufacturing kinks and are now ready to make this into a general release. The core motor design is almost identical to our famous all axle hub motor, only it's using a wider stator inside, 45 millimeters instead of 27 millimeters. This extra width of stator and magnets allows the motor to produce 66% more torque and more continuous power capability, but of course it also makes the motor wider and heavier. It's a full 2 kilograms more weight, bringing the front motor to 6 kilos and the rear motor to 6.2. This extra width, of course, is no problem for fat bike frames to which it's designed. Now most fat bikes have a front fork that's either 135 millimeter dropout spacing if it's using a quick release style axle or it's 150 millimeters by 15 if it's using a through axle. So our front fat motor has adapter inserts compatible with both of these fork standards. It can also be used with no axle extender and just a single side torque arm on the cable side if you're doing a custom vehicle like a quad or a trike where you want very powerful motors mounted from one side. So there's a few more options out there for rear dropout standards with fat bikes. The original fat bikes tended to have 170 to 175 millimeter dropout spacing and they fit a 4 inch wide tire. As the fat bike tires got even bigger to 5 inches, the frames went all the way up to 190 to 195 millimeters for that dropout width. We have an axle extender set available for both of these width options. There's also through axle fat bikes available now at 177 and 197 millimeters and exactly the same way we have an axle extender and an insert cap for through axle support too. Like our regular all axle rear motor, the fat version also comes with an integrated torque sensor in the cassette drive. There's options for a Shimano HG compatible cassette, which is the standard found on most bikes, but also a higher end SRAM XDR option for this super wide ranging 12 speed bikes. We produce this motor in two different winding speeds, a slow and a standard wind option. We don't produce a fast wind motor like we do with our regular ones because the phase current necessary to produce the adequate torque output would end up melting the L1019 connector, which is currently the bottleneck in how much power you're able to put into this motor. If you want to maximize the torque and power output, we recommend using the slow speed winding option and choose a high enough voltage battery pack to achieve your targeted road speed. This will let you take the most advantage of the extra stator width that's available here. Alternately, you can simply cut off the L1019 connector and re-terminate the wires with a higher current bullet plug or similar. So you want to know how many watts is this? 1000, 2000, 3000 watts? Well, I'm not going to answer that because it's the wrong question. The key metric for the motor performance is its torque capability. Now, the standard motor here with no stator aid cooling can do a sustained 45 Newton meters of continuous torque output compared to about 30 to 25 Newton meters for a regular motor. Once you add stator aid to the motor, then the capability increases to upwards of 60 Newton meters. The maximum torque the motor can produce is really going to be limited by your motor controller. 
With the phase on as the grin cells right now, that 90 amp current limit will be setting the cap based on the specific motor winding. If you are running this motor with another brand of motor controller, well, the sky is kind of the limit. So how does this actually feel on a bike? Well, it'll feel quite similar to a geared hub motor because a geared motor has this gearing advantage to produce a high torque fairly efficiently. But being a direct drive motor, it can sustain those torques and abuses in general to a much larger degree. Grin's fat all axle is not just another generic imported fat bike motor. It's a truly performance direct drive hub capable of impressive regenerative braking and sustained power. Light enough that you can still pedal, but torquey enough you'd never need to. It's going to carve out a whole new niche in the light electric vehicle space. And we can't wait to see all the creative and unexpected electrification projects this hub motor enables.